evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJ and TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional. Promo only, and the DJ and TV insiders. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. time for Tuesday Night Live Chat with Brian S. Red and John Young. Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Night. Tuesday Night's show where we go and show you how to make tacos the way the old-fashioned family did back in the day. It's Taco Tuesday. There's Taco a truck Tuesday. up the road and that's what we had tonight. Yeah, well, I wish we would have. I just had. No, just... Dollar Mike, Street Tacos, so, so I got a dozen and everybody's happy. Our house is in cha is kind of chaotic right now because Michael, which a lot of you got to meet Michael last week at DJ uh, Expo, or you've seen him at one of the shows, he had to get his get his wisdom teeth yanked out today. Oh, so yeah. first it's off, he's not awesome. feeling good. And Michael's usually not a grumpy person, so when he's not feeling well and he's, he's, he's a little... And then, uh, and then, of course, he can't eat anything. <laughs> so it's like, well, let's see, we can't, we don't want to make burgers because that's a favorite of his we don't want to do pizza because that's a favorite of his we don't want to do this um hmm. <laughs> liver and onions <laughs> that's about the extent of it soft and yeah um, here's a nice big bowl of chocolate pudding for you exactly so did he get all four done uh yeah he had to get them all all taken out yeah. so yeah he's gonna, i did that too and i got dry sockets oh it's a nightmare oh yeah he's he's uh not doing too too terribly bad he's better than better than he was earlier but want to get it done now before you know and then he has the time before school right to make sure yeah how much time before school like two weeks two weeks yep yep he yeah, had probably to, in two weeks. yeah and he had to get through a lot of his summer stuff and at dj expo was a big thing it it couldn't yeah. do anything before expo so so here we are so good evening thank you for being with us we have got uh broadcast going out all over the internet oh wow we get some pretty good really good numbers on some of this channel so thank you for being with us we'll be watching the chat but the main uh the main chat that we're going to be watching is out on youtube uh that's where i'm seeing scott and reggie and i there's a lot of a lot of names popping up there williams with us tonight yeah um, here is the link for those of you who are on the other uh, facebook and and such this is the one that we're going to be um we're going to be utilizing the chat or following that chat the most. So you guys can pop out there and grab the, and hit that link. Join us on YouTube where we will be talking and such. Tonight. We better make it a good show if it's we, out there and there's a lot of viewers. I think, I think I think we will. We got, we've got a few things we're going to be hitting tonight. We're going to be, uh, last week we were at DJ Expo and you've heard us, we've already been talking a lot about DJ Expo and such. And today, tonight we're going to look at it from a little bit different perspective. I want to make, I want to talk about some of the gear and, and the needs and such the, of us as mobile DJs. We want to dig okay. into that a little bit, Brian. And then um, Jeffrey last night uh, from Canal had uh, had had asked if we would do put some suggestions together and and um, or if there were some ideas and such of what could make the DJ Expo experience better. So I thought, what a great way for us to kind of wrap up our video tonight by uh, hitting some ideas towards the end of what would sure. be what would be great. Uh, so that's that's the idea. So I've got uh, Brian with us uh, and, and uh, Bars with us. Thank you guys for being with tonight. 
and I, I'll, I want to say something before we go any further. Speaking of DJ Expo, uh, John and I were having a conversation earlier about you know people at Expo and how you you approach them, and it's not exactly who you expected, you know, because you saw them on social media or you see their posts or videos or whatever, and they're not the same person in real life. They're a little different, uh, and you know that's that's to be expected. People have like a like a stage presence or whatever, and then when they're just in chill mode, they're a different person. I get that, but I will say this. Scott Carroll, you get what you get. You get exactly what you think you're going to get with Scott Carroll. And it was a pleasure, and he's exactly who you think he is. So, Scott, it was a pleasure to meet you. I'm glad you were able to make it to Expo, your first DJ convention ever. And I, I you, are, you are the real deal. You're the genuine article, and I love you for it. And I enjoyed our conversation and our coffee we had together. So thanks, Scott. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah you that, are you are a genuine guy. I, I I couldn't be more impressed. Yeah, yep. And that's very. I've talked to Scott on the phone numerous times, and, and yeah. different things. And the Scott we see on, in our our video chats and this and not in the chat room here and is that's it's the, the Scott you get you now. And and for those yep. of you, you know. Bar and I have had this uh, discussion when Bar was on because Bar is would be a kind of an introvert, uh, and and myself, I'm I'm that way also. Is that when we're in uh, on camera, we might be one way, but uh-huh. when we're by ourselves, you know, we could just go blend into the background. It's that Homer Simpson uh-huh. kind of fading back into the, that's that can be us, and that's, right. so. Some of the times that Bar, I, Bar is wonderful in person, by the way. He's oh, yeah, not yeah, the yeah. same guy in the video, but I really enjoy. I, I haven't talked to Bar at all. I don't even know if he was the show, but. I always enjoy spending time with them and talking to him. I, I like who he is in real life too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but it was just Scott was just like, "Whoa, this is Scott Carroll! Holy crap, this is really Scott Carroll. This is not a representative of Scott Carroll. This is not a Scott Carroll emoji. This is Scott Carroll. This is exactly what I thought it would be." So, uh, good stuff. Hey. So, so. The show last week, there was some new gear uh, presented. There's some old gear, and we've we've talked numerous times about gear and the mobile DJ. And, and uh, one of the disappointments I think that I had this this year from a couple of the companies out there that had their displays up. It's like for guys like yourself and myself who are doing doing small to mid sized weddings. Yeah, it it's like sometimes I just I just feel there's a disconnect between what we are needing for our jobs and what is being produced out there from the different companies. And I know you've done some videos and talked about this a little bit. Um, yeah. Is yeah. And, and I, I didn't mean those to be negative videos. Um, and so I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. I wasn't trying to hate on companies or TJ Expo. I was just really, and I don't, I didn't really express it very well on YouTube. What I was really thinking about uh, was, when companies make decisions on what to give us, you know, A, are they listening to us? And B, if they are listening to us, who were they listening to? That was kind of what I was thinking. And, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. What John's talking about is, and, and I talked about it in, in my videos, Chauvet had that bubble machine that does fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was there, a scaled-down version of the big industrial uh, one from Fro- Froggies that we saw at NAMP, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I thought that was fun. You know, I, I thought it was neat. And then to see one that's more on a mobile DJ scale was, was interesting. Yep, yep, fit very well. I can see, I guess, that, you know, how it's not, like, perfect or ideal or whatever, but it does what it says it's going to do. It's a relatively small footprint, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you go over to ADJ, uh, and and they had a really cool booth this year. It was different design that they us- than they usually have, and uh, the big presence there. I mean, when you look at the ADJ booth, the first thing that I saw were LED video screens. Yep, and there were like three different levels of them. You know, so they're video panels, and you attach them together, and then you 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 uh, run video through them and they have different resolutions and the resolutions are improving and you know those those sort of things that really kind of stuck out at the show like if you were looking around those were the things that were kind of popping at you right and you know and that as cool as those things are you have to ask yourself who asked for this mm-hmm. who asked for any of this and who wants it who's going to buy it 
they're that big that last part who's going to buy and yeah. you know, these some of these led video screens that are starting at you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars right right and um I, and i wonder at times is is that if and, and let's let's just dig into that video screen um Okay. Every company, pretty much, I think all three, I think American DJ, Chauve, and um, Blizzard all had video uh, LED screens here at the show. I don't think uh, I didn't see Blizzard. Yeah, Bl Blizzard Pro was over um, past the marijuana on the, the. It was on the wall, but the, I didn't the, notice video walls. But that's, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm they, sure they, they had. A, I think they had a little one. They had one there. Okay. Um, my my the thing is is that so the companies have these there and they're. But the kind of people who are buying these, these are our production companies, some of these East Coast bar mitzvah companies. Yes, I know yes. numerous owners of these companies, and the, some of them are buying from from some of the dealers. But a lot of these guys come here, look at it, find out what the tech is and, and such, and they're going and buying direct from a Chinese uh, distributor. And I mean, many of the people that we've we've talked with, it's some that have been on our shows and such, this is this is very very common. When you're at that level, I can buy it a ten thousand dollar video screen for six thousand dollars if I buy it Chinese Chinese direct compared to buying it that way. So sure. I I really I really wonder, and that's that that's the part. It's like okay, so company's got this beautiful video wall, but really there isn't there wasn't anything from the mobile DJ side lighting wise beyond. I mean the coolest part was probably the bubbler, and the second coolest uh, light that I I saw was. Um, was was uh, something from Chauvet, one of the little Bluetooth lights, because I've gotten into that Bluetooth controlling of the lights. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, yeah, there were some cool up lights. You know, Owen had some neat stuff there that uh, that looked really neat, and there were other things that were neat, but it wasn't things that, as a typical average, you know, kind of the middle of the road mobile DJ, where the most DJs are when it comes to the mobile wedding market, there wasn't a lot of things that were really that would be a good fit for them and their businesses, and it's just it's kind of a head scratcher of of why the industry basically is, there's this group of people and we're kind of ignoring them to a point. Well, this is kind of what, what I was wondering. Okay. As I'm walking around, there were some cool things there. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, the, I mean, it's most of the stuff is stuff I was already aware of, you know, the J mass battery powered moving heads, you know, of course that's cool. One thing that they're not talking about over there at, at JMAS, and and I'm hoping to get some of that product here. I've, I've talked to Jason. He's busy right now, but I think we're going to start doing some work with JMAS. I'm going to actually show you some of this stuff. Um, they haven't highlighted it at all, but those do come with an RF remote. So, you know, here I'm thinking if you can can dial those in to do front of house, master slave them wirelessly, and control them with an RF remote – there's your heads. I mean, no, you can't do spotlight dances and such with, with something like that, but you can very easily set up a control, a set of moving heads to just kind of do a light show without any fuss or muss. Set them down, turn them on, and control them with a the remote. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Ape stuff I'm, I like, uh, of course. They've got the coins. They're really going to be needed. The price point's great on those. I have them here. I'm going to be doing videos on them in the next couple of days. Um, and and the um, the LD Systems 95 Go. I mean, that's been out for a minute. But it's there, and it's interesting. And they had some stuff from Gravity that was kind of cool. Little, little uh, uh, you know, stands and adapters and things. They had a cool tripod mount, uh, you know, thing for video monitor that you know, very inexpensive and a really cool way to add video to what you do as a mobile guy. Right. You know, and then you know, phase and there's stuff, you know, yeah, it's well, like yeah. there's not stuff. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, look, a lot so, of, a lot of me too stuff though. And a lot of the same stuff, you know, it's like, here's another led lighting fixture. That's hex and DMX. Here's mm -hmm. another one. Yeah. And we've been seeing these for how long? And yeah. here's another one. Yeah, here's a, it's a hex. It's got seven, seven uh, LEDs on it. Oh, here's one that has the nine LEDs. And here's one yeah. that has this. And this one has a curved bracket. And this one has a squared off bracket. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, I think Dave kind of he mentioned, mentioned in his comment here about the, you know, things that'll make it easier or make our setup and teardown simpler and such. 
that's the kind of stuff I think a lot of DJs are looking for. Things that yes. can, like Brian has mentioned, you know, make easy control. I can control it. I can do this. I'm a single operator. Make it so I can, you know, I had, was talking to a gentleman a day or two ago who um, who said that, you know, he'd love to find a way to make his his system and his, his rig look more elegant and more professional, more wedding friendly but not wanting to break the bank and go and get, uh, you know, there's really expensive facade and all these different things and, and such, because their money isn't, uh, doesn't grow on trees everywhere. And I get that. Right. Now that brings up an interesting point too. I wanted to, um, talk about just kind of how we are on social media and what we say and what the results of this could be and you know what maybe we are making a difference but we're we're making uh, a difference that we don't like mm -hmm. it, 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 what i mean by that is let's pretend that all the stuff that we actually say on on videos and on social media and in different groups let's pretend that the companies are paying attention to these things mm -hmm. um what are the things that we're saying? We've got the tech guys, okay, who are asking for apps and better ways to control DMX. You guys, see a lot of that. Guys like Howie, who, who, if it's like second, it's like a, a you know a second language that he's been doing forever, right. and he's very fluent in it. And he's, and he's good at it. And he's good, yeah. And he can. It's like, oh, I I want lights so you know I can make him go and turn upside down and do somersaults. Yeah. Now, now Howie is, is a tech oriented guy. I, and, and DMX was designed for stage and theater in the 1980s. It's binary code. And, and for stage and theater, it works incredibly well. We have kind of had it shoved in our face in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. I think intelligent lighting was kind of a buzzword in the 90s. And DJ said, ooh, that would be really neat. Intelligent lighting, that sounds amazing. And it was scanners, you know, basically is what it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the ability to master slave things or whatever, or they pocket scans or whatever they were, uh, DJ scans. I don't remember what they were called. ADJ had them, but th that was like the, the hot thing. If you had that, whoa, that's high tech. Yeah. And it was you know, probably mid nineties or whatever. But uh, anyway, you've got those guys who are talking about, you know, a better mousetrap. So, you know, we want better DMX control. We want, you know, maybe easier DMX control is what they're asking for and apps and things. And then on the other hand, you have, and we've, you've already said it, got DJs talking about how they want inexpensive. Mm -hmm. They don't want to spend a lot of money. They don't want anything that's, you know, in the words, I mean, what words do they use? Cheap, overpriced. It's a bad thing. They, you know, they want cheap. They want inexpensive. They want affordable. Otherwise, it's overpriced. It's too expensive. It's out of my budget. I almost think the companies are listening to these comments because that's what they're giving us. Mm -hmm. They're giving us weirdo things that aren't really helping us out. <laughs> they're giving us apps. They're giving us new ways to control old stuff. Yeah. Or... They're giving us more of the same, but, you know, maybe built for less money. When you ask for things that are inexpensive and, and, and you convince the market, you can actually convince the market and these manufacturers that that's what you want. I believe this is a thought process. Okay. They don't want to spend a lot of money. They've made that obvious. Sure. So what we have to do is give them products, it doesn't really matter what, but give them products that don't cost a lot of money. So how can we make things the most affordable? Oh, I know. Let's skip the R&D process. Let's go to Beijing, China. Let's go to one of these big shows where these manufacturers have already built this stuff in-house. Pick a duck off the shelf. Say, eh, I like the price point on this. Put Maybe a, a DJ might like it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But you know what? Put a sticker on Put it. Put my Let's name go. on it. Yep. And then ship it over here. Uh, give us 500 of them. And we'll send them out there to the USA, Canada, Mexico, Europe. And hopefully somebody buys them. It's not innovative. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
when you skip the R&D process, when you skip the quality control process, you don't have innovation. You only have what China gives you at a really inexpensive price. I, I think that DJs, and it's, it's in the price structure that DJs use. Wow, how much can I ask for a, 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 a wedding reception? And, and they're not even taking into consideration what it's costing them to provide this wedding reception to the people. Yeah. They're not taking into consideration any of that. And there are other DJs out there um, who, are, who are getting a, a, a great return on investment. However, they really haven't put any thought into um, a business plan, you know, when it comes to charging. Their, they're just charging what they think they can get. Yeah. I can get more, but I don't really care how much I spent, but I can get more. Uh, with that type of mentality when it comes to business, yeah, DJs are like, oh, I don't like it. It's inexpensive. It's exactly what I asked for, but I don't like it. <laughs> well, come on. If you want something innovative and new, you have to pay for the R&D. You have to pay for the quality. There's no way around it. And, and, and if this is who the companies are listening to, they're listening to the wrong damn people because I don't think they're really um, truly representative of who we are as an industry. I would, I would, I would definitely agree. And, and actually, I'll be right. I got something I want to show you that I actually just came in today. So uh, talk, Hi, Jay. Talk, to, talk to Jay for a second. We'll be t 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, Jay, uh, if you haven't watched anybody in here, if you haven't watched uh, the last seven minutes of the first broadca broadcast stream from a week ago at the Irish pub where put Jay on stage and just kind of put a quarter in and let him go, you missed out. You got to go see Jay just riffing on, on uh, the Dushecki news last week. It was, it was quite good. Hi, John. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is a prime example, I think, of a situation where you've got a company that does some uh, R&D, but I think that you don't have as many mobile DJs in their, their, their uh, areas they used to have. Shobay DJ introduced the Easy Link, the PAR, this is the, the uh, Q1 BT, little, mm -hmm. little LED light. Yep. I ended up uh, buying some of them. What I liked okay. about it is that they have these, this two, these last two letters, BT. This mm -hmm. will hook in with all my Bluetooth. It's battery powered, 10 hour battery, what have you. Now, the, the negative thing is that it's a Q1, it's a quad, which is okay, I guess. But this was, I think they're, se they're selling prices like $85 on these things. And okay. you know, for those of you who are wanting to see, um, it's a bright little light. I can go through and cycle through colors and wherever, mm -hmm. you know, it's a typical little light, nothing fancy. And then of course you can set yeah. it. So then it's looking for Bluetooth and it connects. Yeah. Right, right. This particular light. Now, if I were wanting to sell these to two wedding DJs, I would have asked the wedding DJ and said, Hey, what do you need in a light? Well, the magnetic base is kind of nice. That's for sure. And it sits. That's kind of nice for sure. It, they could have skipped the quad and gone right to the hex. And I realized we just talked about all the lights that are into the hex, but they have the H1 of these. Why, if they would have just taken the H, the H1, the hex one, put Bluetooth capability in with it, I would have paid $150 easily for one of these, for you know a pack of them, which is, at, which is probably more than what they were charging for the, H, the uh, hex version. But instead of going yeah. that direction, we put the Bluetooth, but we put it in and we go cheap with it. And I, yeah. I did buy some. There's, I, I have eight of them that I, I want because I want to, I've got some tent situations that are coming up and I want to be able to do, just a second, I want to see if I can do this. I want to be able to do things like, like, like that. Of course. Wherever, I guess this it's is aluminum. Little, that's yeah. aluminum. There we go. That's yeah. what I'm after. <laughs> yeah, I guess my aluminum tent isn't going to work very good. But that's yeah. what I'm at. I, I wanted to have that capability. And it's like, okay, so we're so close. I mean, We've had this conversation with DJ controllers, and there were a few new things that were at uh, at Expo. They're so close to having something really cool, and then we just we dropped the ball. And specifically, we see them all the time. And Ben Stowe's talked about that that mic that mic input. Why they put yeah. such poor quality uh, preamps in those mics? Yeah, is just you know I just I'll, I'll be vague. I did have a conversation with somebody who is influential at DJ Expo, uh, a, a company that does some uh, pretty uh, good stuff when it comes to uh, audio for us 
as DJs about that very thing. Uh-huh. And uh, hopefully I'm going to be having more conversations about that and, and trying to trying to maybe influence this company a little bit to to go and do some things like that to give us things like, for example, a better microphone input in some of the products and, and why they need it, I think is, is the, the thing. Why they need it is the big question. They don't know why they need it. They don't right. understand why they need it. So they need to hear those kind of things from the DJ community or from someone who, or from people who uh, actually, you know, they want to listen to, you can't listen to everybody. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of that. I was asking people yesterday, perhaps, what would you like to see happen or what would you like to see, you know, DJ equipment wise? What would what would you buy? Right. And one guy popped up and said, we need, not I would like, but we need a real good 19 inch rack mount mixer, robust, built like the old school days. Okay. We who? Yeah. You and what army needs this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I think you're an island, dude. So you can't listen to everybody, you know. Uh, on the other hand, if you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over and over again, you're eventually going to listen. And I do believe that's what's happening with this too expensive, affordable, this, no, well, hold on a minute. If you want something that doesn't <laughs> exist, it's not going to be inexpensive. There's got to be R&D involved with yeah. this. Just be prepared to pay for it. Okay? You know, if, if we all wanted inexpensive cars, we'd all be driving Ford Focuses. Uh, you know, there's more than one car out there to choose from. Or, or Chevy Volts or whatever. Whatever, whatever the you know. flavor is. Yeah, Dodge Neons. We'd all be driving Neons. It'd never change. That'd be great. Or we'd still be driving Volkswagen Beetles from the 60s and, and there would never be another car because that was inexpensive at the time. I was... I was talking to to a very probably one of the most intelligent guys in the industry at the at the expo and he was talking that one of the his frustrations is when when the the company will they 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 put such a focus on the club uh the club people and it was a a, a company that that creates gear for the club club djs but mm. they they they, they, it's like the the wedding market. They just they've almost not completely ignored, but it's it's really it's that secondary thing. And he was yeah. he was sharing that you know the, all the um, the videos that that uh, the interviews and such are focused more on that side of it. And to be able to take that and to be able to translate how this gear works for wedding DJs and even to have some influence in that, so they could create more things for wedding DJs. I, I think that you know, just kind of reading between the lines, I think that he was really saying that there's a disconnect in that that realm. Oh, I think there is for sure. But I mean, how much disconnect is there really when they look at their numbers and who sells what? Mm-hmm. As long as it sells, who cares? And, and that could be the the thing is and, that and yeah, if, if no, if people are still buying it, then it must be fine. Don't change anything. I want uh, to. All, every company has to hit a price point. You know, they they really do. So it doesn't matter if it's premium equipment or budget equipment. There's still, there's still this place you have to hit to, it, to have it make sense for distributors, uh, retailers, and the consumer. Let's just, so, just, Brian, hold, hold on. The uh, price point that makes sense. For those of you in the chat, put in the chat what, how long you have had your current main DJ controller. There's a point I want to make with this. Just put in your in there. How, when you, if you've had it for a year, two years, three years, whatever you've had. And, and we'll, we'll it, it would be also be interesting if you put in there, when do you plan on replacing it? Yeah. Yeah. That would because we'll, we'll tie this in. It'll come, come back together here in a minute. Kind of like what's the lifespan of your average controller mixing board kind of thing. Yeah. So, so I was in Best Buy the other day. This is going to feed right into it. Best Buy carries uh, some entry level controllers. I'm in there to buy a, a Sonos speaker for, for the house. Two different young men, you know, in that college age, are both carrying the uh, the inexpensive entry level controllers. Headed to the checkout, not connected with each other. They were one was headed to one checkout and one was headed to the other, and they yeah. weren't. Small central Minnesota area, and they're selling two DJ entry level DJ controllers. And I I don't know what was it Thursday or Tuesday afternoon, whatever it was. 
you know, as much as we like to think that we, they should be catering to us. And I know a couple of people mentioned this, that they should be, no, unfortunately, <laughs> um, this is where if we're looking at the numbers here, Brian, I don't know if you've, you've seen these two, I'm, I'm seeing them. Yeah. I'm seeing two, them. three, four, five years. Uh, and obviously some of these may not be controllers, uh, per se, like, like, you know, you know, some, but most of these are uh, some controller of some sort. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, that you say that because, like, okay, I'm going to make another car analogy because this is the one industry that I was involved in where I wasn't really pointing to any strings. I was just going with it and making observations. So I worked at a Dodge store, okay, and this was in yeah the early to mid 2000s. You could buy. Uh, a Dodge Neon, you know, that, that was a thing you could buy. That was like the, the, I think the least expensive car that we offered. Okay. Now you could also buy a Dodge Stratus, which is a step up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you could also buy a Viper. They were making Vipers and we always had a Viper on our showroom floor. One Viper we got a year. I mean, every store didn't get a Viper, but we'd order one, one, one of them. And the thing would sit there for a long time, which was good because you wanted it on the floor because it drew attention. And it would get sold eventually. And then you get another Viper. We had a gray one one year. We had a red convertible one year. I mean, we had you know, the gray hard top with the white rally stripes. It was a cool car. I remember them well because I stared at them for months on it. <laughs> oh, you know, wow. They were just there. Mm -hmm. you know. Otherwise, you'd rotate things in and out. All right? So let's take this into the pro audio thing that you were talking about and, and what you're talking about with the best buy guy. Okay. The best buy guy is going to be the neon. He's going to be the budget thing. Yep. All right. He's going to be the down way down here. Okay. Now the guy with something to prove. All right. And let's pretend this is kind of like the club guy. He's going to get the Viper. Okay. That's going to be the, the car he gets. Can you imagine if Dodge only sold neons and Vipers? They sold the bare basement budget Dodge Neon, and then they sold the Viper, and those were the only two cars you could buy at a Dodge store. The top, yeah, the top and the bottom. No, no Chrysler Town and Country minivans. No really nice Dodge Chargers with the Hemi's in them. No Ram pickup trucks. I mean, you know, nice stuff. No Jeeps. Jeeps are a high dollar, you know. Oh yeah, it's all that stuff in the middle that's your bread and butter. Yeah, we sold a Viper every year. Yeah, we sold quite a few Neons, but most people were really coming in there and buying the stuff in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's the DJ. You know? That's the mobile DJ. They don't want the cheap thing, but they don't want the Viper. They need the practical, dependable town thing with the good warranty country. right in the middle. Town and country. They want the Chrysler Town and Country. They want the minivan. They want the loaded Dodge Caravan or the... the the Ram quad cab pickup truck. They don't necessarily want the cheap base truck. They want the nice truck. But you can't just, just give them a neon and a Viper. It, it doesn't make any sense. You have to have that stuff in the middle uh, for, for the working guy out there. And there's more of those guys than there are neon guys and definitely more than there are Viper guys. A lot more than Viper guys. Let's so, let's let's. let's uh, we're going to take a take a, a a quick little break here. Um, for those of you uh, who follow Brian and I, um, we kind of you, maybe you've heard a little bit about uh, coming up next year in February. We are going to be going to Las Vegas for uh, co-locating an event with uh, the Photo Booth Expo. Uh, so uh, let me just we're going to run this spot. And I'll be, we'll be right back. So that is something we're going to be doing in February of 2020 is we're going to be doing our first Vegas event. Now, the, there's going to be a lot of particulars coming out here in the next few weeks on what this is. What you need to know for now is you can go to djntv.com slash Vegas, and that will take you to the event page on Facebook. And that's where we're going to be announcing a lot of the information about what we are going to be doing. You can buy your tickets right now and at uh, through the Photo Booth Expo because we're co-locating this event with Photo Booth Expo for this year. You can get your tickets, and that's going to get you in the door. And then as we get more information and such um, on what's going to be there, you guys will be able to be part of that also. Ticket information and the current code for discounts and such is all following that djntv.com slash Vegas link. 
but you will be there in February, February 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, and you'll be able to hang out with Brian and myself and many others from our channel in Vegas. So there's our, there's our plug for tonight. Okay. Like it. So, um, getting back to it. Um, my, I, I wonder, and you, you've, you've got some, you talked to some companies, I mean, you've flown and you've, you've seen some of the speaker companies in, uh, yeah. when you went to Italy and you've, you've talked to, how much do you think the, how far removed do you think from the average working wedding DJ or the DJ who's out there doing this type of stuff that isn't club DJ? How far removed are some of these companies or do you, are they still really trying to incorporate someone who's in that realm into their, their um, feedback loop, let's call it? I think they're misguided. And that's, that's kind of what I was getting at before with the, the car analogy thing with the, the neon and the Viper. Uh, they they feel like, and again, who are they listening to? I think that they interpret mobile DJ as budget. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's true. Not always. Sometimes it is. There are people in this chat who, excuse me. <coughs> wow, that's that came from nowhere. Uh, there are people in this this chat right now who really want the lowest price light they can possibly get their hands on. And that's okay. There's mm -hmm. a market for that. Oh, certainly. But there are also people in this chat who want to step it up. And they want to have something that's that's better than this cheap thing. Uh, they're getting ignored. The people who are getting the attention are the ones who want the cheap thing. The inexpensive budget off-the-shelf thing. Uh, they don't necessarily want OEM China from Beijing. But that's what they get because that's the only thing these companies can hit a price point with. So, you know, when you when you skip that R and D, that's what you get. So the the folks out there who want mobile yet quality are getting ignored. And and interesting thing you brought up, of course, the the Chinese companies, the Chinese direct um, that can reach these price points. Bar, uh, Rick Webb, and and Brian, I, I'm sure you have a two where people they're sending you the the email saying, "Hey, I've got this light. Could you do a, a review on the light?" Sure. We get these. Generally, there's about three a day that hit right now. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy, but yeah. occasionally you've got someone out there who will send. Uh, they'll they'll send the product out, and I've gotten that, and as I've looked at it, and it's like this is this is just junk. And Thank there you, was, Peter. And there was actually one that. They sent it out. It's like, this is just, this isn't cool. You need to fix this, 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 and this. And within probably an hour, it was pulled off Amazon. And they actually went back and they were working on it. And he, the guy was like, thank you. We, we, we don't work with DJs to know exactly what they're looking for. And that was, on one hand, it was like, how could you be? And then on the flip side, I'm thinking to myself, this guy's actually trying. He's out there yeah. taking that and he's going, they're going to go back in there going to, and actually uh, I think I got an email from him yesterday and they've got a new light that they're coming out with, but now they've, they've gone to a hex and they've gone away from the plastic, uh, plastic yoke, uh, the, the uh, stand on it isn't plastic this time. It was just little, some little things that just made it where it was a complete deal breaker before that, uh, you know. Yeah. So, well, the weird part about it is, I mean, when you, when you really think about it, Everything seems to be, I mean, and I can't think of, can you think of something that's made here for us? That's made, I mean, made in here the, in the United States. Yeah. Cause everything seems yeah. to be made either in Europe or in, in Asia that hmm. I can think of <laughs> all either, you know, high end, low end doesn't matter. It seems like everything is either built in, made in Europe or made in Asia. I, can, I I don't even I don't even know if I could think of even getting out of the DJ industry into the other you know the power tool exactly we don't world. make much we don't make it yeah there you know there's even back at uh, GIE of last year this is the show I hit in October uh, we're in this this green industry so it's a lawn garden what have you and the interesting phrase that a lot of them were using is that it was it was assembled with uh, it was assembled in America. It wasn't made in America. Things were assembled in America with international right. products. And I heard right. that phraseology easily yeah. a dozen times. Well, that's kind of like EV's uh, 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 model. That's what they do. Some things are made in Asia. Some things are made in Germany. Some things are made in Mexico. But it's all put together. And so a couple little parts are made here in the States. It's all assembled in Mexico and shipped. Um, the reason, I mean... Electro Voice, I think, has done a pretty darn good job 
with things like the Evolve 50. Mm -hmm. I think they, they've done a good job. I, I like it. I think the, the, the price point is more than fair for what it is. And uh, it, it's, it's, it serves our needs. When I look at other pieces out there, and, and I think about where they were engineered, because like EV was engineered here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it was, right? Yeah, that, that's where the, one of their main plants, or, yeah, main headquarters. That was, that, was, that was kind of the, the, the brainchild of, of, um, of Mike D, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was his baby. So Mike Evolves, D came yep. up with it. He worked with people. So it's an, it's, it was an American, uh, the, the, the conception of the Evolve 50 at any rate was, was definitely American. The R and D was done here, and the design was done here, and the concept and the the, the need was established here in the United States, uh, and it was built overseas, and that's fine. But a lot of these things, like let's say, Ape Labs lighting, FPT speakers, or most any other lighting company or speaker company, a lot of the stuff is OEM China Asia, and what did they really know about the biggest market on the planet? For mobile DJs, which is the United States market, and and a high percentage of that is private parties, weddings, parties. Yes, yes. the mobile DJ in the United States of America is by far the biggest market in the world for these products, and and I, I've got confirmation of that. I, I knew it. I mean, if you do the math, it's obvious, but. I got confirmation of that show from more than one person. This is the biggest market, mm -hmm. and they're dropping the ball on this market. How is this possible? They're not doing the R&D here. They're doing the R&D somewhere else for something else. So maybe that's part of the problem. They're not really looking at what we're actually doing. They're guessing maybe they want this, maybe they want that, but they're not really paying close attention to, you know, what, uh, you know, Scott Carroll's doing in Florida. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're not watching him. Okay, what does Scott do? Scott gets up, you know, probably about 10 in the morning on, on a show day, you know, sits around and he has, has his eggs and toast and he gets cleaned up and uh, he loads the, the, the truck up and, and kisses the wife goodbye and and hits hits a burger place on the way there because you know scott's hungry and then he goes to the event and he's got to unload and he's got to find power outlets and he's got to uh you know make sure the wireless microphone works and he's got to make sure that everything looks nice and he's got to get it set up in this time frame and all these things i don't think that any most of the okay I, I, that's not fair i don't think most r d people understand this mm -hmm. and the companies that do or used to do some R and D, some real R and D for our industry. They're out there. They've been around for a long time. We all know who they are. Uh, they have these R and D guys who came in in their thirties, and they were mobile DJs. And all of a sudden, they got this R and D job because they had all these wonderful ideas. Because they had empathy for the mobile DJ. They got it because that's who they were. Mm -hmm. And they made some incredible things. And they would look at a product and say, no, that's not going to work because mobile DJs don't do it like that. They do it like this. So that has to be changed. And that's innovation. And that's, that's really thinking about your customer. And, and now, 20 years later, 25 years later, these guys not only haven't been a mobile DJ for 25 years because they've had this high-paying R&D position, but they're long in the tooth and they want to hang on to their position with both hands. They don't want to give it to anybody else. <laughs> they do. I mean, they're, it's self-interest, you know, they're so out of touch. They have not spun in front of an audience for 25 years. They're, 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 they're living in the big house. They got the hot shit car. They got the kids in college, all this crap, but they're not thinking about us anymore because they are not us anymore. They are the furthest thing in the world away from us. If they were smart, and they weren't so so they didn't have so much self interest in mind. They would look for the guy at their company who's still out there doing that wedding every Saturday because he's not really making a lot of dough at the company. He's still trying to, you know, get a couple bucks together so he can pay for the car or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, on top of the rent. 
uh, this guy is hustling. He's at the company because he loves DJing, not because it was just a job. He tried to get a gig here, and and whenever there's uh, you know some scratch and thin stuff, he takes advantage of it and he buys it and he's an active DJ. That's your R and D guy. That's your idea guy. That's the guy who understands what products are needed in this market. And I think there was a time not all that long ago where we saw some pretty amazing things from these little bigger companies because those R and D guys were in touch, but today they're out of touch. Yeah. I think, I think it definitely. Oh God. I just soapboxed. I'm so sorry. You did. You but did. I, I really feel that way. You no, know? I, and I think, I think, yeah, that's definitely, I think there's, there's our disconnect. If we could boil the show down to why, why this is happening is there's just a disconnect between Julius, Julius at a plabs. Okay. And I hate talking about the same companies over and over again, but these are the ones that I've really been paying attention to. Uh, not only uh, you know just their products, but I know them personally, and 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 I do the math on this stuff, and it's like, oh, okay. So Julius at Ape Labs, I think he's like 33, 34 years old. He's a young guy. He he he, he was a DJ. He loves this. Mm-hmm. That's why he built the stuff. That's why he's building the things he's building. Because he was just out there and he, he saw a need and he's filling it. People hate DMX. Let's skip it. People hate plugging things in. Let's not do that. People like lightweight. Let's do that. People don't want to hook a bunch of stuff up and charge it. They want it easy. Yeah, let's do that. So he did that. You know, they want a, 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 a remote control like this one right here that they can turn on and off multiple fixtures within the same product line. Uh, there you go. Jason, he over at J mass. Jason can't be that old. He's a young guy. Yeah. yeah. A lot longer, you know? a lot younger than we are. <laughs> and, and, and he's, he's got R and D going on. He's bringing, he's bringing some pretty cool stuff to the table. Yeah. He's got some, some inexpensive things too, that I did see the show. He had a lot there. Um, so he's trying to reach out to those who are saying too expensive. You know, he's trying to help them out too, but he's trying to make some really neat stuff, put some thought into it, and having some empathy for the industry with some of the things that he does. These are the people who watch. These are the people who I think are doing great things. They they have passion for it. They're not just looking at a bottom line dollar. They're like, hmm, how can I make the most money? It's not what they're thinking. They're thinking, how can I? Make a difference. How can I just build something really cool that's gonna gonna just blow people's minds? That's innovation. That's fun. That's passion, and that's what I like to see in this industry. Yeah, that that's that's and it shows when you see it. When someone builds something just because they thought it was cool or interesting, or or you know it was just out of out of the norm, you can tell there's passion there, and I really appreciate that. I personally I do, and I see, when I see it, I know it. You know, I know some. 55 year old R and D guy didn't do this crap. Mm-hmm. I know a young guy did this and it was his idea. And, and, uh, if, 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 a, 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 if the R and D guy is 55 years old, he actually listened to the young person who suggested this. He didn't come up with it. There's no way he did. There's no way. Yeah. Most likely not. It makes no sense. So, you know, I don't have time for this. I have to go get a new car, okay? A really expensive one to make you feel like crap when you pull into the parking lot <laughs> to go to work every day. Parked in my executive spot. I don't care about what you need. I'm, I only care about is how much, you know, how, how many new cars I can buy. You know, can I, can I make you feel worse every day when you come in? That's what I want to do. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just buy things that I can make a lot of money on and I don't have to take a lot of time on and I can get a more expensive car. Uh, and, and get pats on the back because I made more money. Fine, do that. Capitalism is a good thing, I guess. But you know what? I like passion. That turns me on. And and that's what I like to see. And I think that's one of the reasons why we both have kind of a soft spot in our, soft spot in our heart for Jim Baxter. Oh, my God. I mean, if there is someone who is designing things out of a passion for yes. a need... Now age. Jim's not thirty years old. Yeah, I know. I, but, that's why you, when you were starting to go off on age and such, it's like Jim's. Well, no, well, I, it these, was just these R and D guys who get stuck in this bubble and they don't yeah. care. The difference between those guys and Jim is Jim still gigs. Yes, Jim. I mean, I know how old Jim is. Okay, um, he he's he's he could be my dad. I mean, yeah, he had done it pretty young, but he could be my dad. But 
uh, Jim goes out and does he does high, he does proms, and in homecomings, and college parties and wedding receptions, he still gigs. So when he's on the road, he says, "Hmm, if I had this, it would make my life better." So he builds these things because he's just got that kind of brain, and there you go, and you get the cool stuff from Colorado Sun and Light, be it a, the simplest little, you know tripod pole collar that changes your whole light show and, and makes your life easy for 15, 20 bucks or, you know, this incredible other thing that costs you, you know, $4,000. Jim builds both, but he's thinking about us mm -hmm. because he, he's, he's one of us, you know, that's why he's thinking about us. That's, that's passion. Yeah. And, and how he said it in the chat, Jim is a unicorn. He is. Yeah, he, he is definitely a unicorn, and he he's he's just a great guy. You you showed those Chauvet lights, mm -hmm. yeah. Jim's got like I guess those are off the shelf Beijing because Jim's got them too. Yeah, but Jim put his own spin on them, and they're a little different. They're not Bluetooth, but I think they're hex. Mm -hmm. um, I had them in here. I sent I sent them out, but I had them in here did a demo on them. The one criticism I have on those just. Uh, how much metal do I have around me at an event? Mm -hmm. There certainly is that. Yeah. yeah. And I see this. Oh, it's magnetic. How handy is that? Yeah. Well, oh, you just said you had aluminum tent pole. <laughs> All of our is aluminum. My pro vent table is aluminum. What the hell am I going to attach these things to? Grandpa, I have to literally walk into a room built of I-beams to put these anywhere. Hoping I'm hope, hoping Grandpa has a pacemaker so he's going to attach it to that. Yeah. No, it'll go for a while. Okay, so we got a few minutes left. I want to. I want to, Brian. I'm going to give you a, a, a second to think about this. We're going to do that one quick little uh, teaser with that uh, Vegas thing again. But when we yep. come back, we're going to. I want you to come up with one thing that we that could be done to make DJ Expo better. Okay, so just be thinking about that. We'll be right back here because we're going to be coming to you February 2020 in Vegas. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. We've got over 100 people watching on the different channels right now. So it's pretty awesome. Man. And you guys are making time for us tonight. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for, for being out tonight. So we're going to wrap up our show. Um, this is something that Jeffrey uh, from Canal Sound and Light, who uh, was representing uh, ADJ uh, Rock and Roller Cart, uh, LD system. I think he did that on all. Yeah, he did. Yep. So, uh, so the company, uh, very active and, and such. And if you're looking for some of the gear from that you saw or heard us talk about, give Jeffrey a call out at Canal Sound. Jeffrey will take care of you. He is a, a great dude. He's a good guy. Nicest um, guy in the world. There's, there's, there's a few dealers that we really highly recommend Ben Stowe, obviously, cause he's like a brother. Uh, Vince, yeah, Jeff, Vince Jeffrey's right, right up there. Uh, these are guys who are going to, going to take care of you and, yeah. and I would not hesitate to send you there and uh, to do business with them. So Jeff's uh, one of those guys who he's like, um, you know how Ben is always talking about these installs he's doing, you know, like, Jeffrey's doing stuff like that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like some in Manhattan, like Madison square garden. I mean, he's doing big things, but he doesn't like, you wouldn't know it. It's just, it's just very modest. I, I actually had dinner with um, with Jeffrey and um, the boys from uh, Adam Hall Group, who are LD Systems and Gravity Stands, and uh, I had Surf and Turf. Jeffrey was going to have the sea bass, but it was gone, so I think he went scallop. Hmm. But it was a nice night. I, I did that on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So excellent. Anyways, thank you for for that, boys. But uh, the so, one thing I would change. The one thing that you would change, and I've I've got I've got kind of a little a little thought pro, a little plan here that you know I've been working on that if I could make. Now you just threw this at me, so I didn't have to think about it. But I can tell you the one thing I would change. Get rid of that. Make a lot of noise. DJ Wiki Wiki stage. And if you don't want to get rid of it, if you if you must have it because maybe. Tesla is, is like getting this big chunk of change from the speaker company that's blasting this thing off five times a day where nobody can do any business. How about you save it until the end of the day? Or maybe you open with it. You open with it and you do it for 20 minutes. As soon as people are walking in and you put on this big show and then you only do it again at the end of the show because it's disruptive. Nobody can talk. Nobody can do anything. 
I think that they actually, and I overheard somebody at Expo say to somebody in the booth, they expected you to shut down several times a day for 20 minutes and do nothing Yeah. while that played. And that was supposedly in the contract. That was awful. <laughs> that, that is, I, I don't give a crap about that. And I'm sure somebody does. And it's probably guys like John, when your son's on the stage, you care about that. Mm-hmm. But if it wasn't your son on the stage and you were trying to do our job, yeah. talk to somebody about, um, I don't know, phase or whatever, it would just piss you off. Mm, yeah, or right. if you were there trying to do business with the photo booth, you were selling photo booths and you had a client in front of you who were ready to go and all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the way, DJ I would Times fire that guy. Stage. I, would, I, would, I would fire that guy or give him a script because the next time, I, I if I ever see that guy <laughs> on the microphone, we can ice pick and stab him in the temple and kill his ass. It's terrible. But anyway... Uh, the other thing, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, okay. what was going on with the internet in that place, man? Now you've just covered mine. There, there you go. You're, okay, keep going. For the people who weren't no, there. No, you, no, take it from there. Well, I mean, this I think in this day and age, you've got a room that has, you've got Brian, you've got Barr, you've got Rick Webb, you've got Mojo, you've got myself, you've got any number of 100 different DJs there that are that have a social media presence. For your exhibitors, the value of having Bar do an Instagram thing and say, hey, look at this cool thing I'm seeing right here, right now at DJ Expo, upload. The value to that exhibitor is, that's gold right there. Instead of being seen by the 2,000 people who went to DJ Expo, all of a sudden that little video is being seen by by 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people the same week. Or alternately, maybe it's being seen by people who are at Expo. And they exactly. think about going to that booth, but the internet's so good that, and, and the signal that they're getting for their phone is so good that while they're outside taking a break, they're thumbing through the phone. Oh, here's a video bar did. What, what's that booth? I should go back and check it out. But when the internet is useless, you can't even do that. Yeah. And, and you make a great point because when I do that walk around video, the number of people who come up in the hallway and the, you know, the, the, that saw the Monday night walk around video when it was still half of weren't set up. They're like, oh, yeah, I saw it in the, on your video. And, and a couple of them pointed something out that I didn't even see as I'm walking through, but right. they did. So, so yeah, I think the internet is... Uh, oh, it's awful. That, it's that's awful. just just horrible. And and I know some people mentioned the blocking, and there, there could be blocking in it or it could be just enough metal I in heard, room. I heard jamming from somebody in the know. Oh, so uh, there could what, be... What they, what they told me was that... And they were, they were, uh, uh, on the, they were an exhibitor or vendor or whatever they needed internet to run credit cards to sell things to yeah. do deals on the floor they couldn't get it they had their hot spot but it was this is obviously jam because it's a strong hot spot it's obviously jam so they're like hall i need to buy internet for the day 1250 i saw i saw that uh, uh. 1250 bucks now i heard michael from vibo bought it because he didn't know what to do. Because mm. he was stuck. Well, yeah. His for those of you who aren't familiar, Vibo yeah. is a music, uh, music, um, uh, uh, music list. Uh, uh, it's an app. It's an for, app for, for wedding for planning your your yeah. event and then planning your music for your event. There we go. Sorry, yeah. it's tongue tied here. And then it didn't work. And if you yeah, if you have an online app and you can't demonstrate it, all you are is a picture. You know, <laughs> here's my poster, and here's an app that won't work because it's internet based. I mean, it's a great tool uh-huh. if you have internet oh. well you know regardless of you know but but he bought it so he could show it and take orders he paid the 1250 bucks and it didn't even work very well oh ouch so that was insult to injury he couldn't even get it to work right so he paid for it yet he still didn't get anything so that was absolutely atrocious and and you know the, the thing that bothers me about this is i remember going to the taj mahal mm-hmm. okay not a fan of that property Okay, I like it. It was on the boardwalk, but I, I felt like it was the walk of death everywhere I tried to walk in that place. It was like a two mile walk everywhere I wanted to go. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Nothing was like condensed where it was supposed supposed to be. It's like the layout of here is better, but the internet was screaming in there. I remember editing a video and hitting upload, and I like turned around to do something, turned back around, and the video was uploaded. I was like, something's broken because it <laughs> says the video is uploaded already. <laughs> yep. It just did. It was like, 
done. I mean, something that would have taken me 20 minutes, half hour at home was done instantly. So there's good internet in Atlantic City. Harris just really is, is screwed it up for everybody. I think so. And I and I um, my concern is that that is going to end up biting Expo in the butt. And the question, like uh, Barr, someone uh, mentioned that uh, they they may feel that they're just too big to fail. And I think there is an attitude from not all the people who are involved with Expo. But there is a couple of people who are higher up in the, in the Expo world that kind of have that opinion that uh, you know if you don't like it. You know, sucks to be you because it's we've got the biggest uh, the biggest game in Is town. Is that a Jersey thing? <sighs> I didn't say it as a Jersey person would say it. I, I I'm I'm asking because we ran into other problems in Jersey. Yeah, there's there's a <laughs> yeah there were. Can I can I can I tell the story? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I think we've got it. We wrap it. Yeah, let's go ahead. We'll we'll hit it here. We're we're doing fine. Okay, so Howie picks me up at at the airport on on Monday to uh to go to Expo. And the airport's Philadelphia. So it picks up Philadelphia, and we're heading to Atlantic City on the Atlantic City Expressway, which is a tollway, okay? And I'll make a long story short. We had car trouble, okay? And we were able to nurse the car to a rest stop with a Starbucks and things. It was the, It's the only, like, rest stop or wayside or oasis or whatever on the Atlantic City Expressway, which, again, is a toll road, okay? So Howie's like, what do we do? And I'm like, well, what can you do? You, He's got the AAA gold thing that's just the full, you know, enchilada where you get your toes and they'll tow you up to 200 miles for free. You know, the good one, not the five-mile one, but the 200-mile the one, the really good one. So he calls me. He's on the phone with him for a half an hour, and they can't help him because in New Jersey, okay, Get this. You have to be the special tow company to tow something off the Atlantic City Expressway. No one else can do it. You've got to be the tow company with that contract, apparently. Now, you've got to pay this tow company an extraordinary amount of money to pick you up and tow you to the nearest exit, drop you off there, just in the middle, just on the side of the road, and then you can call AAA and they can tow you anywhere within 200 miles. I've never heard of anything like Nothing that anywhere like that. else I've yeah. ever traveled. I've never heard a story about anything like that. That's just some Jersey bullshit. <laughs> you said I couldn't believe I'm that. I'm sorry. I, I mean, and so I'm wondering if this internet is more of that Jersey bullshit. I love coming to DJ Expo. I love New Jersey. I love the people there. It's hilarious. When I go there, I, I get a kick out of it. You know, I love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I like that. But that part of it, I really don't like. So change that, change all that stuff with the internet, and, and I'm I'm I mean that, that's that's going to help a lot. Oh, it certainly would. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier about uh, da -da, um, I want to see if I can find out. I think Richard mentioned something about um, the DJs who are are spinning and scratching compared to playing music that uh, that DJs actually play, and that that's actually something that. Uh, was one of the things that that when my son Michael, when he was putting together his list, he's like, "Well, what or you know, a thing, a set for that?" He's like, "Which direction do you go?" And it's like, you know, every DJ plays. Inch, 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 inch. Why don't you take songs that we actually play, yeah. and and do that? Um, because you know how rare that is. You very seldom. You might hear them drop a uh, a, a refrain or a hook from a something, but you just don't. You don't hear that, uh, so it's interesting, uh, Richard, that, that that you you share that because that's an area. And I, it's a head scratcher for me. You're there. You want to show how this controller works. You want to show DJs again, mobile DJs in most cases, but even some club DJs uh, that that are going to be playing things like Cupid Shuffle. They're going to be playing, you know, the the hottest track from so and so, whatever. If you're not showing okay. how to utilize and make that work with your devices. That's like, you know, going and buying speakers and listening to and play, you know, some some piano music and trying to judge speakers that I'm going to use for my dance music. It, you, you just can't do it. Uh, Jeffrey, actually, he's in the chat. I didn't realize that until I looked up. What's up, dude? Oh, is he, he's with us tonight. Oh, yeah, there he's he is. With us tonight. And, and he's asking if anybody's ever heard of the New York DJ convention. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. There, there's a group that has been... Uh, uh, working to put together a DJ convention in New York. Um, 
yeah, there, there he goes. He, I, I have not heard too much about it. I, I do know it exists and such. There's actually uh, three different New York events that have uh, had tried to do something over the last couple of years, and I don't know any of them how well they're doing. Uh, they, they uh, haven't, haven't really been expanding into that mobile market, and that's kind of where we live. And they've right, been, right, they've and been, that, that's what I was wondering too. Is it is it ns, 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 or is there something there for us? You know? Yeah, and well, I, Jeffrey knows him. Je Jeffrey knows him, and see Jeffrey. Okay, Jeff is Mister New York. Yeah, yeah, that's he that's in his everybody. backyard. Yeah, he knows all the players. He knows all the restaurants. He knows all the bars. If you want something done in New York, it doesn't matter what it is. Jeffrey's your guy to get it done. So. You know, maybe maybe that would be worth looking into. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if, there, if if New York is friendlier than New Jersey, <laughs> and uh, we want something new, and they want to throw a bone to some of the mobile guys, and they want some promotion from mm -hmm. our side of the industry, which is actually a pretty big market segment. Well, maybe there's something there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't I haven't heard enough about it, but it would be would definitely be be interested in uh, heading to New York to uh, to do a show or be involved with the show because. I mean, yeah. truthfully, we looked at it. Uh, we looked at it three years ago. We were pricing out uh, properties in New York and seeing if it's possible. Uh -huh. But you get to the room nights. Uh, you're, you're talking. It's tough to find a hotel room under two hundred fifty dollars a night. That's hotel like, seventeen. I'm telling you, that's my spot. And then, yeah, things. It's, uh, it's, what's the, it? You, you got to know what you're doing in New York. And hotel the, seventeen is my home away from home. And how much? They, they, what they, they did the Madonna justify my love video. I mean, it's perfect. What uh, it's what do they charge though? Hundred bucks a night. Yeah, that's you, that, you can't find any that have convention space, and <laughs> that's no. that's the problem. Is it finding that? But you got to train. You got to train. That's you, you. You don't need to stay on site. You got to train. It's New York. Or you say Jeffrey's house. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was gonna say we don't Jeff say that, dude. I got a family. <laughs> well, you know, the kids can, you know, they can make hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. I they mean, can I send the kids to camp for the week, man. <laughs> yeah, well, they, could, they could hang out. Most of us are pretty, pretty nice. Everybody right? sleep on the floor. Canal, canal, uh, sound and light. That'd, that'd be great. It's a camping trip at Canal Sound. This would be great. We're camping at Canal this week. I'm gonna bring my my inflatable mattress. It'll be so much fun. Oh. They need you guys. Well, we 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 need something. We're we're here. We're ready to go, and um, we have ideas, but they're not always good ideas. So we're we're willing to listen. <laughs> oh, good stuff. We need to wrap things up. Thank you guys for being with us tonight. Uh, once again, go to djntv.com slash Vegas. That will take you to the event page for our upcoming Vegas thing. We're going to be putting more information in next week. For the next about three or four weeks is really going to uh, solidify what's going to be happening for Shirley with that show in Vegas. Right now, there's a couple of different directions it may go, but the important thing is, is that it's going to be time to go and hang out with the DJ and TV crew. We're going to be there. It's just that if we can get some things put together, we may have a really big, cool thing for you guys to be involved with in 2020. Again, February as uh, co-located with the Photo Booth Expo. So we're looking forward to that. So, Brian, you know, I'm always just along for the ride. You're you're there to to kiss babies and sign sign autographs, and hopefully this time you'll sign the autographs and kiss the babies instead of kiss the autographs and sign the baby. No, I'm your Huckleberry. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you guys for being with us, everyone. Have yourself a good week. We'll catch you next week. Good night.